hello everyone and welcome to ABG's Investor Day and the CTT presentation. My name is Carl Bokvist. I'm the responsible analyst from ABG covering CTT systems. With us today we have the pleasure to host CEO Torbjörn Johansson and uh, live on the feed is also CFO Daniel Ekstrand. Um, with that being said, I leave it over to you, Torbjörn. Thank you very much for uh, joining us today on this uh, webcasted event. Okay, uh, good day to all of you. I think we go directly to page number two. As you all know, we are working with the humidity control in aircraft. We make uh, humidifiers and we make dehumidifiers. And that is to control the climate both in the aircraft and in the sky. We take page number three. Uh, if we look at the first quarter 2020, that was for us business as usual. Uh, if we delivered as we should do an EBIT margin of 35% and the cash flow adjusted for tax payment was very good, uh, 28 million sick. We take page number four. Uh, the second quarter will be different. Uh, we will be impacted by the COVID-19, and we forecast a net sale of 50 to 60 million. It's about half of what we uh, did sell last year at the same quarter. Uh, we expect the aftermarket to drop uh, very high, very much, about 50 percent. The OEM will be less by the COVID-19, and VIP will be stronger than 19 because we have good projects in the VIP sector. We take the next page, page number five. As you all know, COVID-19 has hit the aerospace industry very hard. Uh, literally, almost all the aircraft have been standing on ground during April. And the same for May also. So compared to other uh, hits for the aerospace industry like SARS or the September 11, we think that this uh, drop lasts for a longer time. Uh, we are in the center of it now and uh, we will see some recovery, but the recovery will start with domestic flights and uh, flights perhaps in, inside of US and Europe and the international traffic will uh, pick up later. We take the next picture, page number six. Uh, for CTT, this will mean, uh, if we look at our different business segments, if we start with VIP, we have a lot of projects we are working with. So for the VIP, uh, 20 will be stronger than 90. If we look at retrofit, uh, the red line, of course, it will drop to zero, more or less. Uh, this is because the airlines don't have any money to in invest in any retrofit system. And that will last for some time until at least the airlines start to recover financially also. If we look at our OEM sales, that is very important. We will have a drop, but uh, both Airbus and uh, Boeing, they have decided to continue to build for us, especially the A350 and the 77. They will continue to deliver them to a lower pace than 19, but still at the reasonable levels. The aftermarket, which is important, very important for us financially, uh, they are, it is dropping now. We see that in the second quarter and it it will drop down as long as we have uh, going through this crisis. Uh, when it starts to recover, it will recover with uh, the airlines when they start to operate the 787 and the 350 again. How quick that will go, uh, um, we don't exactly know. But we take the next page, page number seven. As again, we said regarding the OEM, uh, Airbus has come out in April and say they will build A350 to a rate of six aircraft a month instead of nine, as they had 19. That will last for 20 and I think also for 21. 
And uh, Boeing also stated in April that they will go down to about 10 aircraft a month during 20, and then going down further until 2022, down to about seven aircraft a month. Uh, of course, this is uh, much lower than 19, but it's still at a reasonable level for CPD. We take the next page, page number eight. Uh, if we look at the aftermarket, uh, of course, the aftermarket for everyone in the aerospace industry is down. It's uh, close to zero for many. For us, it is, it is especially the wide body aircraft that fly long distance where we have our systems on. And for us, the fleet of 787 and 350 are the important one. Uh, there is about 1,300 of those aircrafts out there. And the thing that is good for us is that it is those aircraft types that was lost part by the airlines, and we think they will be the first one to start to fly. So we are lucky that our products are on the two most popular aircraft. They can fly all the distances, and they are the best. They have the best economics of all the wide bodies and they have a size that is not too big because when they open up the long distance flight and they will not need too big aircraft. They will prefer the little bit smaller ones. We take the next page, page number nine. Uh, this is a new page. Uh, we have looked into uh, uh, statistics uh, where we can see Actually, this is for the 787 aircraft, that is our most important aircraft. And you can see on the picture how many of the 787s that was not in service during the weeks that has passed. You can see in the middle of April, about 622 aircraft were parked out of a total fleet of 967. But since then, more and more 787 aircraft have started to fly again. If you look at the top left corner, you can see the total flight hours that 787 have performed. Uh, in March, it's a decrease of 39% compared to before COVID-19. In April, it was down 73%. And in May, the May data we will get by the end of June. But uh, as you can see, 787 is an aircraft that's still flying. And of course, that is the one that produces the most of the market for CTT. So I think this is promising. More and more 787 starts to fly, and they fly relatively many flight hours when you think that you think that the the whole fleet is under, but they still fly about 30% of what is normal. We take the next page, that is page number 10. And CTT is in a strong position that we should go through this crisis. Uh, we, we have to adapt to what we call the new normal. So during the crisis, we expect that we will have uh, about 40 to 60 million in sales. Uh, our objective is to remain profitable, and we have uh, lowered our costs uh, on a yearly basis. It's about 20 million. We have laid off 20 people in production because we don't need them, because Airbus and Boeing are building less aircraft. And on the white color side, we have gone down in working time to also uh, save money. We have a very strong cash position. Uh, we, we have still, at least we have by the end of the first quarter, over 100 million cash. Uh, available credits is about almost 100 million more. If we look at our different segments, uh, if you look first, the most important one is, of course, the OEM. Uh, both Airbus and Boeing is lowering the production rate of 350 and uh, 787, but it's still reasonable. If we look a little bit further, uh, during 21, Boeing starts to deliver 777X, and uh, they are ramping up production also on the MC-21, the Russian aircraft. 
and uh, a year later or so, we will start to deliver our first system for the Airbus narrow body family, first drying systems. If you look at retrofit, of course, that is not looking very promising. Uh, we will not sell retrofit system before uh, the airlines start to earn money. But on long term, of course, the drying system is good for the sustainability. The fuel saving is interesting and we, uh, we can save CO2. And humidifiers could be more interesting now for the cabin uh, environment because it's not uh, good with too dry air in the cabin. VIP looks strong during 20. And uh, as you know, we have started to work on uh, business yet. We have been thinking about that for, for many years now, but we got a chance to uh, develop our system for the biggest Bombardier global aircraft, the 7,500, and we expect to deliver to two aircraft during this year. So the business yet segment is there is some potential for CPP. The aftermarket is, of course, uh, the sum of everything. Uh, we. Uh, we know that the aftermarket will recover relatively quickly for us because the 350 and the 787 are these aircraft that will earliest start to fly. And as we saw all later earlier on the page, 787 is still flying uh, even if we have the crisis. And you should also remember that even if we produce less aircraft or produce system to less new aircraft, every aircraft we deliver to is increasing our growth in the aftermarket. Even if it's at the slower pace, the aftermarket will continue to grow. We take the next slide. That is page number 11. Here you can see, uh, I like to show you aircraft pictures, but here you can see what we are working with for the future. On the left top corner, you have the Global 5, 7,500, and the aircraft that can fly 15 hours, the private jet, uh, with a relatively big cabin. There we are now developing two systems, two systems for two aircrafts. You have the uh, A321 XLR. We are developing the uh, drying system, which will be uh, offered in the whole A320 NEO family. On the left lower corner, you see the uh, ACJ, A320, that's a VIP aircraft, where we work together with Airbus to uh, improve the system. It's easier for the completion, completion centers to install. And in this program, Airbus will support us in selling the system. They will recommend our system for the Airbus cooperative aircrafts. Uh, it's very important that uh, Airbus is in the favor of our system and recommend the VIP customers our system. On the le right lower corner, you have the fin of the, or the, or the I think it's the wing left of the 777X. That is, of course, an aircraft that Boeing starts to deliver in next year. And uh, we have humidifiers on that, and we have humidifiers for first class on the launch customer Emirates. And I think ANA will also be an early customer where we have humidifiers for cockpit business loss and first loss. We take the next picture. That is picture number uh, 12. As we said, OEM programs, uh, 77 is coming. Uh, we have MC21 is coming next year also. And uh, a very big OEM program could be the A320neo. And that's it from 23 and We take the next picture, picture number 13. And then here's a slide we have made to show you a little bit what the airline industry do to really try to get the passenger back into the aircraft again. Uh, first of all, you should know that uh, the more than air like the 8350 and the uh, 787. They have very good ventilation systems in the aircraft. They, uh, they change the air very frequently, and they have very efficient filters. So I think uh, in the aircraft, it's really a good environment. So there is no, not more risk principally to, to catch 
the viruses in the aircraft than in the airport or anyone else, anywhere else. Boeing, they have started a confidential travel initiative where they go out and try to help the airline take different measures that will make flying safer. That's a program that is ongoing. And the International Society IATA, they do a little bit the same. The, the airline industry really tried to do a lot of things that uh, will make air travelers safe and uh, increase the confidence by the passenger that it's okay to start travel again. We take the next picture, and that is uh, picture number 40. Uh, we, of course, make humidifiers. And uh, uh, it's well known that it's not good for the human body to sit too long in very dry environment. If, uh, if you fly long haul, if you fly business or first class, you have a relative humidity that goes below 10%. And of course, the, uh, all the, the aircraft or the passengers, they dehydrate and the mucus on the people are affected by this dryness. And if you dry out, if your immune system is weakened, you have a bigger risk to catch a cold. And also, of course, COVID-19. Uh, this is well known and uh, I think we have a possibility that uh, uh, this dry environment and in long distance aircraft, especially in first and business, could be discussed. And perhaps when the crisis is a little bit over, or at least we have come some time, it could be that airlines are more interested to invest in humidification for premium passengers, but also for the crew and, and the pilots. So, so I, I hope that our product, we are sure that our, our product uh, is good against uh, dehydration. And I think uh, dehydration will be discussed during this pandemic and the effect it has on the immune system. So perhaps we could have some help. So we take the next picture. Uh, that is the last one. So if you should fly long haul now, and if you should fly business class, I would say, it's a little bit bullish perhaps, but I would say the two best airlines you can fly with is China Southern and Aeroflot, because they have the most modern passenger aircraft, the A350, where with a very good ventilation system, very good filtering systems, but they also have humidification for business class. So as a passenger by those two airlines, you will not dry out if you buy business. And you have a chance to arrive rested and in a better shape that you can withstand any attack from the COVID-19. Uh, we are very happy if we would have celebrated this a little bit more with Aeroflot without the COVID-19. But if you fly long distance, please fly with Aeroflot or and I saw them because then you have the best air in the air. We take the next picture, and that's question and answer. I said we should make it in 20 minutes, so Carl, was it okay? Very good. Thank you, and we'll uh, we'll keep uh, Aeroflot and China Southern in mind once we we feel that we we can or are allowed to to fly again. Um, so uh, perfect. A first question revolves around a bit uh, short term or near term data, I should say. Uh, you touched upon uh, the data that you've seen regarding the B787 uh, Dreamliner, but uh, otherwise, can you give us an update on what you have seen now during uh, during May uh, on your end in terms of OEM deliveries and aftermarket? Have you seen any changes from the situation we had in March and April, perhaps? Uh, we, we have predicted uh, that the aftermarket goes down uh, so uh, uh, we have no we, we see nothing else than what we expected and regarding oem sales and so on they, it's uh, like planned but we had a gap in uh, in april of, uh, 
an operation as Carolina, but uh, both uh, plants are working again, so we deliver again. Mm. Also, and on the VIP side, as we have said, we have uh, big projects and good projects, and they are running as, as usual. Mm. On the vector field, of course, we are down to more or less zero. Mm. Mm. Uh, and uh, now, if we think about both, um, you guided uh, not only Q2 here, but you guided the sort of potential sales range in a uh, low demand environment, as you say. And I think if we listen to uh, most airliners, there is an expectation that long haul flights should uh, should start to uh, begin again towards the end of the year or even in the beginning of 2021. I think the comment you made in your last quarterly report was that you expected long long haul uh, flights to resume activity again in uh, the fourth quarter. Um, is that still your view? Yes, I think, uh, and as I, as I show you the picture about 787, it's uh, even though uh, uh, the April and May was the toughest time for the prices, there was still 30% uh, or 40% of the uh, aircraft in operation and the flight hours in April was uh, still 30%. So even if you say that the long whole fleet is standing on the ground, that is not correct for the A350 and the 787 especially. So, and for us, I think it doesn't matter too much how many passengers you have in the aircraft. Of course, the airline earn less money. But uh, if they operate our aircraft, the flight the humidifier is in operation and the crew rest humidifiers are in operation. So we expect that, uh, first of all, 350 and 787 pick up and uh, that we will have off the market sales also because they are not down to zero. Understood. Uh, and and then if we perhaps think about because uh, uh, I mean you and I are now talking to one another through a, a web uh, or video conference system and I think this has been the topic of many people recently regarding potential uh, secular trend shifts after COVID-19. So what is your view regarding the future of air travel, and I mean business travel is a very important part of a business for many long-haul flight operators. Um, do you see any long-term strategic changes because of the way we people communicate and uh, uh, do business with one another? Of course, this is uh, perhaps my personal view. You know, I, I, have, I have been around for some years, and every time we have made some uh, improvement in uh, digitalization and globalization, you say, now we don't need to travel anymore. And then we have traveled even more. So I think, of course, we will have uh, some problem in the aerospace industry for one, two, or perhaps three years. But I'm pretty sure that we will come back to normal again and, and come back to the growing curve. If you ask me personally, I have not been at Boeing for about a year. I really need to go there again. I'm homesick to see it. And I think a lot of business people, okay, you can handle your business uh, via WebEx and everything for some time. But don't make any business if you don't meet people. So business travel will come back again. And if you look at uh, other travels, okay, now we have a problem with tourism and so on. But uh, the young people and most of the people in the world will see the rest of the would like to see the rest of the world, so they will come back and travel again. I'm very sure. It's a little bit longer drop than normal, uh, but uh, it will come back. Mm. Uh, with that, I would like to say thank you very much, uh, Torbjörn, for uh, for taking your time here, and uh, thank you everyone who has been listening to this CTT presentation. Uh, please stay tuned for more presentations from our investor day, and uh, with that, uh, again, I say thank you, and uh, have a continued good day. Thank you very much.